Alas, this is information sheet number one about the basic computer concepts. After this information sheet, you must be able to explain the characteristics of a computer, identify the components of computer system, and identify ways on how to integrate media and technology in various content areas. Okay, so dito sa info sheet number one, babalikan lang naman natin dito yung mga uh, basic computer concepts na siguro ay napag-aralan nyo rin during your uh, junior high or senior high school. Okay, so alam naman natin na malaki talaga yung naging impact ng computers sa buhay natin plus nung nagkaroon din ng internet. So what is a computer? An electronic device that accepts data from the user. Okay? So, nabanggit natin yung data. It is a collection of unorganized facts and figures and does not provide any further information. So, yung data, pinaprocess ng computer para maging information, which is a structured data, organized and meaningful process data. Ano ba yung mga characteristics ng isang computer? We have speed. So, mas napadali ng computer ang halimbawa pagka-compute, di ba? Ng mga complex problems or complex computation. Accuracy. When it comes to accuracy, syempre, magiging accurate lang naman ng result kung tama yung input na ilagay ng user. Storage. Computer can store mass storage of data with appropriate format. So, kung babalikan natin yung mga old computers na mababa lang ang storage compared to today's computers na yung iba na sa 1 terabyte or higit pa, mas marami na yung may store na data sa ating mga computers. Diligence. Computer can work for hours without any break and creating error. So, gaya nga nung sa accuracy, dependent pa rin yung error dun sa input na ilalagay ng user. Versatility, we can use the computer to perform different types of work. So, uh, multitasking yung mga computers natin. Pwede natin gamitin for entertainment. Pwede rin natin gamitin for productivity. Power of remembering. Dahil nga meron tong storage or may capacity ito to store data or information, May mga uh, certain files na tayo na pwede na natin, uh, hindi naman sa pakalimutan, kundi hindi na natin masyadong nagamitan ng utak kasi nga nandun na sa computer. Siya na yung mag-i-store mag nun para sa atin. No IQ. So, wala talagang utak ang computer. Does not work without instruction. Unless pagaganahin ng user or ng person. No feeling, does not have emotion, knowledge, experience, and feeling. Siguro mag, magtatanong kayo paano yung mga AI na dinadevelop ngayon. Wala pa rin naman siyang feeling na gagawalan siguro niya makaramdam. Makaramdam dahil dun sa processed data na na-input na sa kanya. Kumbaga, uh, yung program na in-install dun sa, ba, sa isang particular computer, ganun na siya ka-complex. To the point, nakala natin, meron ng emotion or nakakapag-isip na yung computer. So, there are different classifications of computer. Babalikan lang natin ang mabilisan ito by size, by type, and by purpose. When we say by size, syempre kung yung capacity na nai-store ng computer. So, dito sa by size, meron tayong microcomputer, mini computer, mainframe computer, and supercomputer. So, yung microcomputer, yun yung mga personal computers na ginagamit natin, like the laptops, desktop, yung mga smartphones, or any gadgets na ginagawa nat ginagamit natin for personal use. Then, the mini and the mainframe computer, Halos pareho lang ang function nila, usually for database handling. Pero, syempre, mas malaki yung capacity ng mainframe compared sa mini computer. So, huwag nyong mapagbabaliktad yung mini 
doon sa micro. Kasi ang mini computer, hindi naman talaga siya mini when it comes to the size, physically, dahil ang mga mini computers ay pwedeng kasing laki rin ito ng mga uh, cabinets, like the mainframe computer, yun nga lang. Medyo limited yung capacity nito. And of course, the su super computer are the fastest computers na ginagamit ng mga uh, NASA, mga weather forecast stations, yan. Okay, so yan yung mga difference between the computers by size. Next, computer by type, we have the analog, digital, and hybrid. So, yung mga analog computers, yun yung mga sinaunang computers na wala pang masyadong electronic, more on mechanical lang. So, example is the needle clock. Okay? Digital computers, yun yung mga ginagamit natin ngayon. Yung mga laptops and smartphones are considered as digital computers. Siyempre, pag sinabi natin hybrid, ito naman ay combination ng analog and digital computers. Kadalasan yung mga um, ginagamit ng mga computers sa hospitals are hybrid. And a basic example that we have here is the smartwatch na pwede natin consider as hybrid computer. Kasi yung uh, smartwatch, di ba, analog halimbawa yung data na nakukuha niya sa atin, tapos nagre-release siya ng digital output. Next is computer by purpose. We have the special purpose computer and the general purpose computer. So, pag sinabi natin special purpose, meron lang siyang specific task na pwedeng gawin. Like the washing machine, surveillance equipment, traffic control computers, oil exploration systems, weather forecasting simulators, and military planes controlling computers. Kung baga, customize itong mga computers na to. Unlike general purpose computer, pwede natin gamitin for Different purposes, salimbawa for, yun nga, entertainment, for productivity, yung mga microcomputers are examples of general purpose computer system. Ano ba ang mga components ng computer system? We have the three basic components, the input unit, central processing unit, and the output unit. So, dito sa input unit, used to install enter data, used to input data. So, yung mga details ng input unit, madidiscuss or malalaman ninyo sa information sheet number 3. Next is the central processing unit. So, dito nangyayari yung processing of data para makonvert into information. So, meron 3 elements ng CPU or central processing unit. Yung memory unit, so once a user enters data using input, Yung computer, i-store store muna niya yung data dun sa memory unit. Hanggang sa ma-process siya, nandun muna siya. So, once na process na, yan, pwede na siyang mawala doon and ma data transfer na siya halimbawa sa isang storage device. Arithmetic and Logic Unit or ALU, ito naman yung nagpe-perform ng mga arithmetic or basic mathematical calculations, pati yung mga logical functions, katulad ng pagka-compare ng data. Control unit, dito naman, sabi nga dyan, backbone of computers dahil responsible for coordinating tasks between all components of a computer system. So, yung hardware, software components, yung control unit ang nagmamanage nun. Okay. Then, the output unit. So, para makita natin or maintindihan natin yung process data or your information, syempre, dapat i-display yan sa atin. Pwede through monitor, through print, or through sound. Yan yung mga output unit. Elements of a computer system. So, we have six main elements. Yung hardware, yan yung mga physical elements na computer system which will be discussed further in information sheet number 3. Yung software naman, yan yung mga programs installed inside the computer that helps the user na ma-process yung data or makapag-interact sa computer which will also be further discussed in information sheet number 5. 
people, of course, bali wala naman ng computer hardware and computer software kung walang user na tao, di ba? So, tayo yung nag interact with the computer. So, pwedeng mga programmers or yung mga professionals na gumagawa ng mga programs. Pwede rin yung mga systems analyst na siyang nagpa-process or nagde-design and data processing. And yung end users. So, marami tayo end users o yung tinatawag din na operators na tayo yung madalas na gumagamit din na computer. Procedures related sa software. So, set of instructions written in code to instruct a computer on how to perform a task. Tana software or do calculations. So, meron tayo tinatawag na hardware-oriented procedure. So, kumbaga, procedure ito para mapagana yung mga hardware components na computer. Software-oriented procedure naman para naman sa mga software uh, components ng ating computer. Internal procedures, the direct flow of information and the sequence of data. So, more on the central processing unit naman itong internal procedure. Kailangan din natin ng data. So, wala na namang ipaprocess ang computer natin kung wala tayong ipapasok na data sa ating computers. The, measure, the measurement of data is done in terms of bytes. So, kung na, uh, naririnig ninyo yung term na bytes, yan yung measurement ng data. So, 1 kilobyte is approximately 1,000 bytes. Okay, and so on and so forth. Connectivity. So, para naman makaroon tayo, magkaroon tayo ng interaction with other computers o yung network na tinatawag, kailangan ng connectivity. Yung connectivity, pwede yung local using LAN cables or wireless connections. Pwede rin naman yung wide area network o yung internet. is the most obvious example of connectivity in a computer system. So, ito yung simple diagram kung paano ba nagwa-work ang isang computer system. So, ito tayo, user. Uh, gumagamit tayo ng computer through the use of software, makakapag-communicate tayo. At syempre, yung operating system nag-work together with application software para mapagana rin yung hardware. At babalik ulit siya. Okay. So, yan lang naman siya. So, yan yung flow ng uh, components of the computer. Okay. So, that ends our information sheet number one. So, in the comments below, um, itype nyo dyan kung ano yung concept na medyo hanggang ngayon, nalalabuan pa rin kayo, hindi nyo masyadong nauunawaan. Pwede nyo itype dyan sa comments. And, on that note, see you again on the next lesson. Information sheet number two. Bye!